Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Odroid C4 from Hardkernel. This new $50 single board computer is very much a direct competitor to the Raspberry Pi 4 4GB model. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have our uh, Odroid C4, which I purchased directly from hardkernel.com in South Korea. And the price from Hardkernel is $50 exactly, which is very similar to a 4 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4. And uh, the price for this board from Odroid Co. UK is currently £59.93. So let's open it up. Looks nice and straightforward, just get in the end like that. Shouldn't defeat even me. There we are. And oh yes, little board, anti-static bag. Don't always get those these days. Looks like we need to cut. Do not worry. Mr. Scissors is here to let us in and we can get in like that. And uh, there we are. We have the Odroid. Haven't cut properly, have I? Deary me, Mr. Scissors sort of failed there. Ooh, it is a red single board computer. The first red single board computer I've ever seen. That's, that's rather nice, isn't it? And uh, I think we should just orient it ourselves relative to other Odroid boards. One of the Odroid boards I've looked at many times in the past is uh, this one. This is the uh, Odroid uh, XU4, which I've also sorted a really nice looking single board computer with its uh, blue uh, heat sink in the fan. And uh, although I do like the red of the, the C4. And if we compare to uh, another Odroid board I looked at very recently, this is the uh, Odroid N2, which is clearly significantly bigger than the, the C4. And uh, I think we should also compare, fairly obviously here, to the, the Raspberry Pi 4. And as you can see, the Odroid C4 is the same size as a Raspberry Pi 4, but it doesn't have an exact Raspberry Pi form factor. So there we are. We've seen an Odroid C4 alongside some other single board computers. So let's now delve more deeply into what you get for your $50. So, here we have the Odroid C4, which, uh, as you can see, has got a large heatsink pre-fitted, which is good to see on a modern single board computer. And beneath the heatsink, we have the system on a chip, which is an Amlogic S905X3, which contains a quad-core ARM Cortex-A55 CPU running at 2 GHz, as well as an ARM Mali G31 MP2 GPU, which has got four execution engines and runs at 650 megahertz. Also under the heatsink here are two of the four chips that provide us with four gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. And if we turn the board over like that, we can see the other two RAM chips here. Also here on the base of the board, we've got a micro SD card slot, which will take a UHS-1 micro SD card. And we've also got here a connector for an EMMC module. And uh, this can take an 8, 16, 32 or 64 gigabyte EMMC 5.0 module from which the board can boot. So we can boot it either from an EMMC or a micro SD card. But unlike on other Odroid boards I've looked at in the past, there isn't a boot selector switch. And the boot priority here is first to try and boot from the EMMC module if one is fitted, and then to boot from a micro SD card. And I'm not sure that's an ideal order because it means if you've got an operating system or an EMMC card fitted here, you can't then just slot in a micro SD card to boot from that. You have to first remove the EMMC module to boot from micro SD. Anyway, that's the way things are set up. So let's uh, turn the board back over the right way up, make it happier like that. And we'll now take a look at the first long edge of the board, where the first thing we find is this. This is a barrel jack for power, 5.5 millimeter outer, 2.1 inner. And this can take an input of between 4.5 and 17 volts. Although a 12 volt, two amp power supply is recommended by hard kernel, the same power supply you'd use on an Odroid N2. Next, we've got a micro USB 2.0 port with OTG, and then along from that, we've got a full-size, yes, full-size HDMI 2.0 connector that supports 4K output at up to 60 frames a second. It's worth noting what is not here, and what is not here is a 3.5mm audio jack, not on this side of the board or anywhere else on this board. 
but there is a seven pin audio expansion header, although clearly you can't plug your 3.5 millimeter headphones directly into that. Spinning around on the first short edge, we find a gigabit ethernet port and then four type A USB 3.0 ports. Spinning 90 again on the second long edge, we find a familiar 40 pin GPIO connector. And then finally, on the second short edge, we have an IR receiver, so we can control the old Droid C4 using infrared remote control, as well as a four pin UART socket down there for testing things like that. And then last but not least, down here, as always, the obligatory and always very exciting system LEDs. And uh, that's it, the Odroid C4. And you may have noticed what I've not mentioned is Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And this is because, as on other Odroid boards, there's no onboard wireless networking here. And while I know that some people think this is a good idea in terms of security, and I understand it makes the board cheaper to manufacture and cheaper to certify, I personally think it's a great shame to have a board like this, which is a fantastic new single board computer, but it doesn't have onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And therefore, whilst it has got uh, five USB ports, the four USB 3 over here, the one uh, micro USB 2 over there, one of those ports is going to be surrendered to a Wi-Fi dongle in many use scenarios. Greetings. Here I am back again. And as you can see, we've got the C4 powered up and we're going to see how it runs a number of operating systems. And the first of these is uh, this. Yes, we've got Ubuntu 20.04 desktop running here on the Odroid C4. And to achieve this, I downloaded a minimal image of Ubuntu 20.04 and then took a 16 gigabyte eMMC module that I borrowed from my Odroid N2, which can be fitted into a special micro SD card adapter. And so I used this to write the image to the eMMC module on my laptop before fitting it into the C4. And then on boot, we arrived in a terminal where I performed a sudo apt update to update the repositories, and then a sudo apt install Ubuntu desktop. And uh, this took about half an hour to a trundle on through, after which I ran a sudo apt install Mali Bifrost Wayland driver to install the GPU driver, and then after a reboot, here we are. Now, I would point out that Ubuntu 20.04 with a desktop, as we're running here, is not entirely stable on the C4, and that it's really a little heavy for this board. But uh, it does work. We go, for example, to run up the uh, system monitor there. You'll see everything is uh, functioning uh, perfectly happily, which is always uh, good to see. And we could run up, say, a LibreOffice writer, like uh, that. It'll come up in a second, hopefully. It is a uh, that's not too bad, that wasn't too bad in terms of booting up. Or we could run, say, um, let's do Firefox, go to the web, take a slightly longer second, but it is, it is working. I've had much worse desktop experiences on many PCs over the years. This is perfectly usable. This said, if we go to a YouTube and bring up my normal test 1080p video, you'll see that uh, it does not work uh, terribly well. This is hardly a surprise, I guess. We've got quite a lot of drop frames uh, coming up and um, well, not a lot of motion in the picture, is there? You're not going to be playing YouTube video. We haven't even got actually any sound here either. Anyway, this is absolutely not the desktop operating system I'd recommend for the C4, but as I got it working, I really wanted to show you that the latest full version of Ubuntu desktop is an option, and one which I suspect will improve over time. Right. Here we are booting up again, this time into Ubuntu Mate 20.04, which is the desktop operating system that Hard Kernel supplies for the C4, and which again we're running from an eMMC module. And uh, oh, here we are, we can just click on the login to uh, log in like that. And I've been testing this out across a couple of days, and I'm impressed with this. I've been using Ubuntu Mate on Odroid boards for some time. I like it as an operating system anyway. So it works very nicely here. We've got a uh, very good range of applications pre-installed. As you can see, I've scaled things up. You can see things hopefully straightforwardly here. This is a, a very nice system to use. Although I would point out I've had a couple of quite spectacular crashes where the whole thing is locked up and I've had to turn it off to, uh, to do anything at all. So I don't think the software is absolutely there yet for a sort of total stable use. 
Let's just run up the, uh, where are we up here, the system monitor. I knew it was there somewhere. Uh, just to show you what's going on there, you'll see this is a lot lighter on the system than the Ubuntu 20.04 we were just running. It uses about half as much memory when the system is literally just booted up, nothing else is running other than the system monitor. So that's obviously why it runs very nicely on the system. And uh, let's just uh, run up, or we'll do the LibreOffice Writer just to prove it works. Comes up probably slightly faster here because uh, it's a uh, Actually, not a lot of differences. I think there's a test document here somewhere which will show you uh, something very exciting. Probably not very exciting. Greetings, everybody. There we are. Told you it wasn't very exciting. Anyway, let's um, run up Firefox and show you that the internet's working fine here. We can get to the web. Hopefully, we can. Like a little rotating cursor thing there. Oh, here we are. We're going to get, hopefully, in a second to the world's favourite website. There it is. And soon I can add to my SBC section my first red SBC. They're all here look green and, uh, and black and, and blue. There's going to be a red one for the Odroid C4 fairly soon. If we just go to uh, YouTube, we'll try our standard uh, test video. It's sitting over here. And uh, we play this. Immediately you'll see it's much better than it was in uh, Ubuntu 20.04. Just bring up stats for nerds. This is not perfect playback. It seems to take a while to settle on this system, but when it has settled, the playback is, is pretty good. I think this is a just about usable for HD YouTube playback and, and certainly usable for 720p playback, but it certainly isn't perfect, as you can see from the, the drop frames at the top of the, the screen there. But this is clearly a, a much better experience playing back a streaming video than we saw on the Ubuntu 20.04. So this is, this is, this is pretty good. So let's uh, come out of that. And also we've got sound on it, which uh, makes a difference, doesn't it? Having sound and video is always better for uh, watching videos. The other thing I want to show you here is to go into the terminal, which is sitting down there, and to compare the speed of the uh, EMC flash module we're running from to uh, an SD card. And I've got in the C4 a SanDisk Extreme Pro micro SD card, which topped my test of a micro SD card in a recent video, so we know it's the fastest I could be using. I just do a LSBLK to give you a, a block device on the system. You can see here this is the uh, EMMC module and this is the, the SanDisk card. And I've installed a HD parameters, HD Palm, with a sudo apt install HD Palm, and that is hopefully ready to run. And if we go there, this will test out the uh, internal EMMC storage. It will give us an error. Oh, it is a password as well. Oh, droid, no droid. There we are. It gives us that error. This error doesn't mean it's not going to work for the test. It just means it can't identify the drive because not all drives give the right information back to HD Palm. It wasn't really built for things like EMMC modules and SD cards. But anyway, as you can see, we've got a speed of 153 megabytes a second for the EMMC module. And I think I've got here somewhere, uh, somewhere down here, hopefully. There we are. That's going to be the one for the SanDisk card. And uh, that'll give us a speed in a second. Oh, it's so exciting, isn't it? What's going to happen? There we are, what, about 77.74. So you get roughly twice the speed using an EMMC module than using the fastest micro SD card I could find to use on a single board computer. So it's well worth installing your operating system on an EMMC module if you can on the Odroid C4. Well, guess which operating system we're booting into now? Is it iOS, you cry? No, it's Android. We're booting into Android on the Odroid C4. And uh, I've got this installed on a micro SD card, and I got the image from the uh, hard kernel website from the Odroid wiki. And uh, here we are in uh, Android. And uh, I'll just show you uh, where I got the images from, both Android and all the other images I've been using in this video. They're from this page here, which is the Odroid wiki. Here we're under a C4, and you can see we've got Android and Linux images and third-party images as well. We've looked at the uh, Linux images available already. And uh, I would say this is not a brilliant version of Android. I know there are other versions of Android people can use on the Odroid C4 that don't come via the, the hard kernel site. But I always think if a manufacturer makes an image available, really you should try out that image. And uh, we don't get a lot pre-installed. We get basically what is here. As you can see, we don't have a YouTube app. We don't have the Play Store. There are some instructions for installing the Play Store if we look on the... Um, web page here, but uh, they're not, shall we say, instructions that are entirely official. 
Anyway, I think I'm going to leave Android here. There's not much else to say about it other than the fact it's here. I'm sure you could get a Play Store running if you wanted to. So I'm going to move on and look at some of the uh, other OS images, or at least one more OS image, which is under the uh, third party here. And uh, that is going to be, I think, a uh, Core Elec, because you can see we've got Core Elec available there to uh, give us Kodi running on the uh, Odroid C4. And now, as if by magic, we're booting into Core Elec here on the Odroid C4 which I've got installed on a micro SD card. And if you don't know Coralec, it's a minimal Linux distro that gives you everything you need to run Kodi, the Kodi Media Player, which is what we're arriving in here right now. And we've got here the standard Kodi interface we see on all sorts of devices and many other single board computers. And I've not set everything up, but I have gone down to uh, add-ons and uh, video add-ons, and surprisingly enough, I've added YouTube. But unfortunately, if we try and access the YouTube app, we get this message which says the YouTube add-on now requires that you use your own API keys, which is possible to configure, but I'm not going to configure here. It never has been official to use a YouTube on Kodi, and clearly it's been getting more difficult. So you could probably make this work, but it's not something I'm going to do. But uh, as we're here, we might as well play something else. So I'm going to go to uh, back to the main menu into videos and to... Uh, uh, files, I've added a USB drive in here. Let's play our sample file that way. And uh, there we are, it is running. Kodi is a very nice media player, and of course plays our uh, HD footage no problems at all from a local file. So uh, there we are, we even get to have a nice little look at the ladybird and the bee and things at the end of the video. But I think there I'm going to leave my exploration of Odroid C4 operating systems. The Odroid C4 is a very nice new piece of hardware, which I'm sure in time will find a great deal of support from the single board computer community. As I've said several times already in this video, the C4 very much begs comparison with the Raspberry Pi 4 4GB model. And therefore, fairly soon I'll be posting a video called Odroid C4 vs Raspberry Pi 4, in which we'll do a proper showdown. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you see there, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Uh -oh.